So I'm just going to get my slides up. And do feel free to put any um, any questions that you have um, in the chat. Um, me and Martin are going to take turns in presenting today and um, we'll just answer whatever questions you've got as you go along. So welcome to this um, brief kind of um, whistle stop tour of finding stuff for your assignments. Um, my name is Anne Archer, so it's really nice to meet you. And this is my colleague, Martin Hurst, and we work in the liaison library team. Um, so we're based in the Philip Robinson Library um, and we help support um, students um, in your kind of um, finding, evaluating and managing information for your studies. Um, you can come and see us um, and make one-to-one -one appointments with us and you might see us out and about in teaching. Martin's really involved um, in reading lists as well. Um, so he'll talk a bit more about that later. But the plan for today is to quickly take you through why planning your searches is important, um, how to create a search plan, uh, introduce you to some of the tools. We can't go into depth, unfortunately, about different databases. You've got such a widespread of people here, um, but point to where you can find that those databases and those high quality information and just some tips and help about um, how to get the best out of searching. So that's the plan um, of action for today. So first of all, planning. Um, the least efficient way to search is basically not to plan. Um, I don't know how many of you do that of what's happening in the search box now on the screen of literally going to Google or Google Scholar or library search and literally typing an assignment question into, um, into that application. Um, sorry, I don't know why it skipped on there. I do, I've done it in the past. It's so tempting, isn't it, to just type it in. I don't know if you found, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you hit on some results that are useful, but often it's really frustrating. You get lots of kind of um, problems in terms of, um, yeah, irrelevant results, and it can be overwhelming. You can get far too much information as well. Um, another really efficient way of searching is just to think in your head, well, I just need to go to one place and surely I find everything in one place. I think we're in that kind of Google generation are we in one search box, you find everything there. And for cinema times or bus timetables or whatever, that's perfect, isn't it? Google is perfect um, for that. But for academic information, we need to kind of step back and get out of way of thinking of that, that actually, no, we need to think about what type of information we need um, before we search, because that will affect where we search. So um, where you're going to find statistics is going to be different from um, a journal article, which might be different from a professional trade um, magazine um, or a map or um, a, digi a digital map or, you know, so many different types of information out of there or, um, you know, a statue or, a, um, yeah, a patent or something like that. So so many different types of information. And we need to think about where we're actually going to go and search because it's going to be multiple places. Um, and Google is brilliant, isn't it? Um, I don't know if you've ever used Google Scholar. You could maybe put in the chat if you do use Google Scholar. Um, they're great starting points, but they shouldn't be the only place that you're looking. Whether you're an undergrad or a postgrad, you need to go beyond Google. Google is a business and um, most of its revenue comes from advertising um, and um, the algorithms aren't released to us. It changes every minute, every second. Um, they're not structured databases. Google Scholar can be a great way of finding a wide range of scholarly literature. You've got cite them searches, so you can follow through who cited an article since it's been published, and that's excellent as well um, but equally there's lots of frustrations the filters are really bad and um, it's very limited and also you might find things behind paywalls I don't know if you've ever discovered this and think I really want that but I can't get at it so um, it's a it's a good starting point but if you're going to use Google just do it effectively and um, we haven't got time to go into how to do that today and um, there is a whole separate your skills session on googling and how to do that effectively but there's some tips and tricks there about um, in a video that you might want to watch it's just three minutes long um, and some links to google advanced search and um, that you might want to have a try as well and um, to make it more effective um, i'm just going to share my screen now and show you a search plan video um, so our um team has put together this video which has really just takes you through how to create a search plan and how to plan because it's a bit of a novelty um, and you may not have come across this before so hopefully the sound will work um, and that you can hear it so shout up if you can't
Searching for information for your assignments or research projects can be a daunting process. With so much information and so many different resources out there, where do you start? We're going to show you how to prepare a search plan so that when it comes to finding information, your approach will be focused and effective. A search plan is an outline of the information you need, where you're going to find it and how you're going to search for it. There are four main steps. 1. Describe your research question and set limits on your search. 2. Break your topic down into key themes or concepts. 3. Build a bank of alternative keywords and synonyms for your key concepts. And 4. Plan where you're going to look by identifying the types of information you need. In step 1, the focus is on setting the boundaries of your search by describing what you do and do not want to include. Here we are researching the effects of social media on the mental health of adolescents. We want to limit our scope and aim to find information from the last 10 years, with a focus on the UK. We'll exclude research about adults or younger children. In step two, you need to identify the key concepts for your research question. Here we have identified the key concepts as effects, social media, mental health, and adolescence. In step three of your plan, list three to five related keywords or synonyms for each concept. People describe information in different ways, and it is useful to start with a bank of keywords to help you find the most relevant information on your topic, no matter the terms the author has used. Once you've identified your keywords, it's tempting to begin your search. But to be effective, you need to think about what types of information you need, whether academic, such as books or articles, professional or trade literature, newspapers or historical documents. Where you find each of these types of information is different. Step four of your search plan encourages you to think about the types of information you need and plan where you'll search. You will find lots of database suggestions from the library website. When beginning your search, the best approach is to start small, testing two or three keywords in a broad tool such as library search. How you combine your keywords will affect the results you find, and there are some simple search techniques you can apply that will help you to find more relevant information in a range of search tools. Where a database has an advanced search box, use it to help structure your search around the concepts you identified in step two. Combining the key concepts with AND will narrow your results to materials that include all of those terms. Putting OR between your alternative keywords and synonyms will broaden your search by finding results that contain either word or phrase. Use quotation marks to find an exact phrase containing two or more words. Many databases have refinement options that will allow you to limit your search results by date or exclude subjects. To find all relevant information on your topic, aim to try out your search on each of the databases you identified. As you start searching and exploring the features of different databases, remember your plan is a flexible guide. You will need to review and adapt your plan based on the results and the type of information you're looking for. To help you get started, we've developed an online search planner that will guide you through these four steps and help you organise your ideas. You can also submit your search plan for feedback from a librarian who can suggest improvements online or meet with you to talk about your search. You can find further help and advice on finding information from the Academic Skills Kit, identify specialist resources on the library website or contact us via Library Help. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen so you can see me again. So I hope that's been helpful as a quick overview of how to create a subject um, and a search plan. And you can do this for each of your assignments. Um, lots of students use our search plan for a larger piece of work, like a dissertation, but it can be really helpful for whatever type of assignment you're doing to take a step back. And as you can see, as Emily did in the video, break it down, what are your keywords, what are your limits, what do you not want to find, um, and kind of structure it like that. 
you could just do on a notepad if you found that easier and um, but there is um, the search planner which is in the slides and you'll have access to the slides and um, after the session um, and so you'll be able to revisit that as well and as it is said in the video you can come back and get help and input from us um, and the team and um, when you have cre created a search plan then before you go off and search as well or if you're struggling um, to find what you need you can come back and if you created a search plan you can ping it off to us and we can have a look and we can make suggestions about where you might want to try and um, searching a different place or with different keywords as well so that's in a nutshell the planning i'm going to hand over now to martin who's going to talk to you about um how to where to start basically with finding information that's great thanks Anne. so i'm going to do a bit of a demo here i'll go through we're going to have a look at canvas and reading lists look through um, a resource called browsing which you may or may not be aware of and then have a look at library search and just do some live live demos here and just give you an idea of, of the best place to start the, the kind of the initial starting points for finding your information so i'm going to share my screen now okay so can you see that Anne? yeah i can martin brilliant great okay so start with reading this why are reading this important well they're important because they act as a single accessible st starting point to the key research and information that you may need for your for your assignments and this is information that's been compiled by your lecturers or your module leaders um now particularly with if you're undergraduate or a taught post, taught course postgraduate this is going to be most relevant because as you'll see within every canvas module home course home page there is a link to your online library reading list and that's on the left hand side here so i'm just going to scroll down and i'm just going to click on the library reading list link and what this does is it links to the library reading list system and it opens opens the reading list for you so here we are this is just an example list is an education list obviously um Right across faculties, we have we have these reading lists in place, and it's a little bit of a collaboration between the library and 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 the academic staff. Where obviously they put the resources forward, and we are trying to present these in the most accessible way possible. Um, why is this online reading list different to maybe the, the, the piece of paper you you picked up at your lecture or tutorial? Well, as you'll see in this demonstration, we have direct links to the to the articles that may be recommended by your lecturers, or the e-books, or the physical books where to find them in the library so the first thing to say with your online re online re reading list here um you'll have your module code at the top and, and the module and the course course title a little bit of information how many items are in the list when it was last updated you'll see the list is structured in slightly different ways in sections usually sometimes it may be essential recommended a background reading um, or sometimes they may be split up into different topics across the module or weeks and lectures and tutorials but essentially the, the most important thing to take away from this is that these are key readings that have been set by 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 the academics to help you with your assignments so hence great starting point so if we just go in the first section of this this demonstration we'll see there's a there's an educational researcher article um, journal article being been cited here to recommended reading and um, if we click on it when you're in your, in your reading list you see straight away it gives you the bibliographic details but also a link to to to, to the journal subscri subscription in the, in the article access via newcastle university libraries and that's important so if we click on it and take a second or two and it'll open up and take you direct to the article there sometimes you may be asked to uh, pop your your student number in and your, and your password um, you just do that and it takes you through. And this is what obviously the key difference as Anne, as Anne touched on to using Google Scholar, which will sh show you the important articles, but it won't actually give you that, that subscription access to, to, to the journal articles, which, which we do have through the library, which you can access via your reading list. If we just close that, obviously that was a journal article and we scroll down, you'll see we've got a whole host of um, electronic books, eBooks, um, within our collection. We've built that up uh, more and more over the last two years where people have been studying more remotely and learning more remotely. And again, it's just a case of clicking in, you'll have your bibliography details and you'll have a view online link to your, to your ebook. I'm being uh, prompted to log in with the ebook access. So we'll just do that here. I obviously don't want to save that. And there we go, it takes you through to the ebook. Different platforms look slightly different, but they're all they all 
essentially have, have the same, same information. The ebooks are broken down into chapters and subsections, uh, appendix and references at the end. As you'll see, you'll be able to download the PDF or read them online. And there'll be a little bit of information at the top about how many copies of an ebook an institution has, because obviously we have an ebook, but that doesn't mean it's just completely open access. Some are full access, but others are on individual license and what have you. But that information is always, always shown at the, at the top of the screen there. So let's go back into the, into the library reading list. What else is it to say? Well, sometimes you might be recommended with a book chapter or a journal article that actually we don't have subscription to, or the book itself is only visible as, as, as a physical copy in the library. So you get a shelf mark as we have with, with, the, with, this, with this reference here. Um, when, when, when we've got book, book chapters and, and, and articles that we don't have access to, we can actually digitize these, these references and then have those uploaded to the, to the reading list as well. So you don't necessarily have to go and find the book and then photocopy the, the chapter or whatever it may be. And I've just got an example in this list. We'll just scroll down. Um, so if you ever see the digitization approved tag within your reading list, that means it's a book chapter and article that's been sourced by the library uh, scanned, digitized, and uploaded to the list. So again, we'll go into this. You'll always be prompted for, for your, your, your um, university credentials. And this just takes us in to Cortex, which is the platform that hosts it. Um, and if we just move along there, we should see the scan. It's got a toolbar on the way. Okay. So that's just a little bit of a brief outline of the types of things you'll find in your reading list and why using the online reading list is so important and, and just eases accessibility for you. Um, direct access to journal articles, as we said, available through your Canvas, so it's in your virtual learning environment. And um, the final thing to say is, obviously, we've got this reading list here, but it doesn't just include the 39 items. Obviously, if you think about every reference that's cited in each of these journal articles or ebooks, um, is opening other possibilities to your research and places to go. So with what we maybe call 360 degree searching, you explore the reference lists and the bibliography lists within those journal articles, and you can expand, expand your kind of horizons so much more. So that's reading lists. And as I said, to start with, obviously, undergrads and taught postgrads, that's kind of a great starting point. What if you're a, a postgraduate researcher, where might be where might be a good place to go there? Um, so we've got this resource called Browsing. Now this is accessible through library search, which I'll show you in a second. And this is a way of basically identifying the journals that will be important to your, your research and then putting them into a kind of a structured, a structured bookshelf, um, as it's called in here, and building up a collection uh, to aid you with your research. If you're a PGR, you may have identified a whole host of journal titles, journal articles um, in your literature review, but maybe haven't kind of like put them in any kind of order or, or not quite not quite sure how to present them. So, but browsing can be can be great, great, great for this. So the first thing you can do at the top here, we can see we can we can search, we can type a journal, or we can go by by um by topic. And it's just a case of clicking in, um, scrolling down, you may see architecture journals, and then you'll get a whole whole list Martin. of sections. I, yes. I can't see browsing. I don't know if anyone else can see it. Can oh, right. Sorry about that. List. We can just see you reading this still. Oh dear. So that hasn't changed, right? Let's um let's stop the share and then start the share again. And let me go into right. Can you see browsing now, Anne? Yeah, that's great. Right, okay, right. Sorry about that. Right, so this is the home page of browsing. So as I was talking, I wrongly assumed you could see it. So there's a search bar at the top where you can type and search for a journal title, or you can search by topic, which sometimes is the easiest way to do it. So we can click on arts and humanities and you'll see a whole host of subsections there. Let's just say we're studying architecture. Again, subsections within architecture, architectural history, and let's click on the architectural history journal. So this will open it up. You'll see it will give the most recent volume an issue on the right hand side with 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 the articles and a whole host of um, list of the archives that we have subscriptions to. And what you can do is you can add that to your bookshelf. You click on the add to my bookshelf. And it will be added to your collection. 
within the top. If we go into my bookshelf, you can see I've I've started building one here. Um, you've got um, bookcases with shelves within there, and you can you can kind of break them in and, and into different topics and themes. So in my bookcase one, you see I've got an anthropology section, archaeology, linguistics, and philosophy, and you can break these down um, and add your relevant journals in there. And it's just just again another good way of kind of planning and structuring research and doing the kind of legwork in the foreground, which will kind of reap benefits when writing your dissertations or preparing your assignments or your theses or whatever it may be. Another useful uh, resource within browsing is you can actually go a little bit further than just your bookshelf and your journal 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 titles so you can kind of create article collections as well. So if you're within a journal and you see an article that you that you like, that you think is relevant, um, just as an example, there's a whole host of options. You can export a citation, you can share it via social media or whatever. You can link to the article, download it, but you can save it to my articles and that would go into the top here. And again, you can create collections within your articles. So again, I've got an anthropology and archaeology section just as a demonstration there. And you can go in and then see the journal article in there. So once again, browsing, very useful research for for, 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 for getting your, your search strategy in place and certainly for, for doing more, more detailed research as a postgrad or even as your undergraduate dissertation, it would be it would be would be helpful um, in that way. Now the final the final demo I'm going to do is, is through library search. What I'll do is I'll stop the share and share again just to make sure it works. Um, let me go back in. And so yeah, read, reading lists are your real starting point, aren't they, and Martin? Certain, and then certainly, yeah. Once you've done that and looked on that and done maybe some 360 degree search and then you move on to library search um, is the next place for you to search. And, okay. and Martin's going to show you now. Can you see library search there? Yeah, right? perfect. Got library search, library search open, so that's good. Um, so as Anne says, another, the next step of, of searching is using using library search. And this is basically a search engine that looks at the entire library catalog, both physical and electronic kind of resources. So if the library's got it, it should be catalogued in library search. Um, we were just in browsing there before. So if you just see at the top here, explore, explore journals. If you're in library search and you click that, that's your direct link to browsing. So if you remember that. The first thing to say is always log in with your own details into library search. It's important because it will tailor your searches um, to your own needs. You'll be able to pin articles, pin pin books, pin references, pin, pin, pin resources and what have you. And it'll, it'll keep a record of your search history as well. So always log in, don't just view it as a guest. Um, it's just a basic search engine as we've talked about. Um, as a simple search, the most important thing you need to remember is this, this drop down option on the right hand side, whether you're searching within the search bar for everything except articles or everything itself. And it's just as a quick demo, We'll go for a topical search. I'm searching everything except, except articles here. And you'll see we've got 920 results. On the left-hand side, a whole host of filters, books, journals, that's journal titles, titles theses, audio, visual, and other. Now what that is excluding is articles, as it says, as it says, as it says there, if you want to include articles within your search as well, your journal articles, you would change that and we can just run the same search. And what we'll see straight away, whole host, so there's 100,000 extra results have come that, and that's because it's including each individual journal, journal article that, um, that's recognizing that keyword. Obviously 108,000 results can seem quite daunting, but you've got your filters on your left-hand side. So straight away, we can break them down. We want full text online, open access articles. And what you can do is go through a, a, a set of date range as well, apply the filters, and we'll see immediately that that's dropped down. So we've gone down to 14,000, which is still a lot, but more within the realms of, of what you would maybe kind of a starting point for your literature search or whatever it may be. We've got an article at the top here. So what can we do with this, this information? We've talked about filters. Well, let's say this article, really important to our research. Obviously, we've got the link within there. Um, as we saw through the reading lists, you can actually get the citations. So this is in Harvard, Harvard style, the citation there. 
export stuff to 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 to, to uh, your, your reference management software. But if you want to you want to remember this this article, you want to pin this to your collection. Little pin in the top top right hand side. If we click that, that'll pin it and go into your collection. That's what I'm saying about it being important about being logged in. If we go to the pin on your home page, we'll see the articles that you've pinned within your collection. And basically every time you, you log into library search, you can go back. You don't have to run your searches again. You can go back, that's just popping up there now, just catching up. Um, go back into, in, into your previous searches and, and access those, in, those, those, those resources. Save searches tab, it'll remember that this is searches that you've made in the past and obviously your search history as well. So we can see the search history that we've gone through. So that's just a bit of a quick whistle stop to us through some of the key resources. Um, things to remember, online reading this, extremely important for information recommended by, by your tutors, but also for accessibility. Browsing for uh, key research articles for when you're delving in deeper to a dissertation or maybe your thesis. And library search is, is kind of, think of it as a, as a library search engine. If we've got it physical or electronic, you'll be able to find it in library search there. There's a university app as well. So you can access all of this um, online, obviously via the library website um, on, on, your, on, on, on your laptop, but also if you're using a tablet or a smartphone, we do have the university app as well. Um, and you'll, you'll be able to see information about that when you, when you review the slides. And what I'll do is I'll stop sharing my screen there and there, and Anne can pop the slide up just with the university app so you can just see see what it looks like. Um, just as a brief thing, is that okay, Anne? Yeah, that's fine. Um, I might show it in a bit. I might go that's straight okay. on. To it. Um, I'm conscious of time and right, that's great. Subject, guys. Um, if you want more in depth on library search, Martin's done some of the basics there. There's a video in the slides, and it goes through particularly finding. You might have noticed as Martin um, whisks down the filter. There's a peer reviewed option that's a great way of finding good high quality stuff for your assignments so if you want to do a quick win-win tick the peer-reviewed articles on there peer-reviewed basically for those of you who may not have come across it before is those articles that have been kind of run through a filter who have been given a gold rubber stamp by other peers in the field and said that they're good quality um, and material and um, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't read something that's not peer-reviewed it's just a really good way of filtering things if you've got a lot of materials as well and you want to find that high quality information and a lot of assignments will ask you to find peer-reviewed journal articles um, as well. There's also um, ways to save your searches a bit more detail, and that's all in the video as well. Um, so Martin's gone through um, where to start. Library searches is our one-stop shop, basically, as he said, for all the kind of um, resources that we have, electronic and physical. Um, but just to be aware that they're not it doesn't show everything all the time, particularly for law. So if you're a law student, I think somebody for, was from law who signed on here, not all the databases get pulled through into library search. And we really recommend that you search um, your subject databases separately on top of library search. And um, that's because they have more um, advanced filters on there. And um, you can do some more specialized searching on there as well. And um, so you may get a crossover between library search and searching a subject database um, separately but you may also get content that you may not appear on library search as well. So I'm going to quickly show you um, where you would find your subject databases. Um, I know somebody said that it's not something you find easy and it's not. I know us and um, me and Martin as library staff, we always have to learn how to use a database um, and um, there's so many different ones out there um, that we subscribe to as well. Martin, can you see my screen? Yeah, that's coming through great, Anne. Fantastic. So from the library web page, um, you'll see under resources and study support um, a whole list of different um, resources that we have are there to support you. Um, but the subject guide is the second one down on the list. Um, and here we have basically created a guide for each subject. Um, so it's not every program, but it's all the subject coverage that the university has. Um, so um, we'll scroll down. You can see we've got you know marine technology marine science i know we've got politics and history student here cross-cultural communication student education subject as well so there's a wide variety um, of um guides for you to use we have basically made them 
the next place for you to look after library search, as I said, and we've kind of gathered all the main resources into one place for you um, so that you don't have to do the hard work. So I'd really encourage you to bookmark your guide um, for your subject. Your subject may cross over with other subjects and know there's somebody here doing a combined honours um, and um, your um, assignment may cross over, say, with um, business and law. So you might want to look at both um, subject guides. But bookmark the ones that you're going to be using um, um, frequently and get to know them. They're all laid out in the same way. So this business guide looks similar to the history guide, which looks similar to the marine science guide and have the key resources on the front page. You'll see quick links there to how to reference when you are doing a bigger dissertation or project all through to academic skills. So how to note take, how to write, how to do exams all on there and you'll see scrolling along the bottom the different types of information so we've got resource guide links on here so as I said at the start it's really important to consider what type of information you want and um, because you're not necessarily going to get statistics through library search you may get some through library search but you might have to go to um, our statistics guide to find out where you need to look next or government information so you need a government report or a government publication or you might need to find an image or a map and um, then you click through to these guides and um, and it will take you through um, to what we have in printed form, what we have in other forms as well. Um, so digital format, so might give you advice, there might be help videos about what to do, where to go, um, and it'll explain the subscriptions we have. So it kind of groups it all really nicely together, and you can access that from your subject guide. You can also ask, access those from the resources and study support um, um, top level as well, and go straight to the resource guides. And down on the left hand side, you can see it's got advice about books for your subject, what ebooks collections you might want to use, um, journal articles and databases. This is probably the one of the ones that you probably be visiting the most. Um, every guide has it broken down into what main databases we would recommend for your subject. So they're normally alphabetical, as you can see here, and they give you a brief um, description of what um, that database is like. Um, and Sometimes there'll be crossover, sometimes you have to use multiple databases within a subject. It really is trial and error and it's like I said at the start, searching is like a massive jigsaw puzzle and you're trying to fit it all together um, and you'll get to know which databases work for your subject and which ones you're more comfortable with. Um, and that you like to use. You'll see on most of the subject database is something called Scopus. Now Scopus is an interdisciplinary database, so it's a really good place to start after library search if you're not sure where to go next. Um, it is a bibliographic database, which means that it may not have um, the full text available in there, like the PDF, but wherever possible, it will link out to library search where you could find the full text um, that is available. There's no time to demo it today, um, but it's a really easy, nice database to use. And I'd really recommend that you go and look at it. Um, a bit like Google Scholar, you'll see cited by, you can see who's cited an article since it's been published. That's a great way of finding and doing what Martin said, that 360 degree searching and going next to, um, to find what else you should read. Um, but it also got things like citation alerts up. So if you found like a key article, I think this is brilliant. This really answers my assignment question. You can set up an alert um, and we'll let you know of anything else um, cites um, that key article um, while you're writing that assignment. That's particularly useful for when you're doing a longer piece of work like a project or a dissertation. And it has great peer reviewed articles in there. Most of our journals and databases will have journals and database helps. So there'll be videos um, to get familiar with those databases. Um, we also link up subject specific resources that we'd suggest that you use. Um, so we're saying, if you're a business student, it'd be great if you look at company information and market information, and that'll give you all our subscriptions in one place for those databases and advice about how to use them. Um, sometimes you might have resources that are provided by your school, and we again, we link to those from the subject guide. Um, special collections and archives, particularly, and we could be used in any subject, but you may be more interested in it maybe if you're doing an arts or humanities subject about how to use our archives and um, that's a whole different way of finding information and again we have a your skill session all about that um, and then on every subject guide you'll see subject help and any news and how to book a one-to-one -one with us if you need more help so that's a really important link um, and who we are and how you can contact us as well and we write blogs about um 
the different subjects and what resources are there. So the subject guide and resource guides are really kind of key place to go. Um, and I would say definitely bookmark them if you can bookmark them today, if you haven't already, uh, and start to get familiar with your databases um, on there. It really will kind of save you time later on, um, save you time and kind of effort and yeah, and stress um, that because everything is in one place. Um, I'm just switching back to our slides and we've covered quite a lot, but you can see, as Martin said um, on there, there's a Newcastle University app and it shows you how you can search library search. So it's another really useful way of accessing the catalogue from there. So finally, before we finish, we just want to touch on about different types of searching. So um, different databases um, are constructed differently. So Scopus is a keyword database um, and there's lots of other keyword databases out there. And these databases basically rely on whatever you put in them, the keywords that you choose. Um, so that's why it's really important to step, take a step back and make a list of different keywords when you're searching in library search or somewhere like Scopus or Google Scholar, because you're having to be like a detective and guess what that author has used in their um, article. Um, and even if you use um, a slightly different variant or a different spelling or Americanism um, opposed to a UK spelling, you might miss out on finding that article. So it's really important with those databases in particular that you really make a list of keywords and try different keywords in your search um, and um, see what works and see if you get different results. Another type of database is called um, a subject heading database or controlled vocabulary database. Um, and these databases can be a bit more intimidating um, in lots of ways, but once you get to know them, they can be more helpful um, because what happens is that the indexers, the librarians, when an article comes into these databases, they consistently give them a theme um, or, and they assign them a keyword. And then they basically have a thesaurus of all the keywords that you can click on and search. So if I type, so primary school children into a thesaurus, um, an education thesaurus on a database, it might say, don't use primary school um, children, you need to use elementary school children in this database. So it directs your search and helps you to find um, more, more of the articles that might meet your requirements. Um, often these databases also let you have keywords attached to them as well. Um, so just be aware of what type of database you're using. And if you're not sure, have a look at the top of the database you're in and see if it's got a thesaurus in it. If it has, it's probably a subject heading um, database. And again, we're gonna be doing more sessions about how to create a successful search in a database and you could book onto it at a different date um, and watch the videos from them as well. Um, so searching tips, um, if you found too much, and sometimes it can be overwhelmed with results, maybe think about, do you need to focus down and not just do a generic database focus on a, like a subject's more specialised database? Think about those limits and filters that you've planned in the start. You can see Martin um, demonstrating that in library search about um, put a date on it. Do you need to refine your date in there? Is it a type of information you need to alter? Use linking words and in your between your keywords or saying tell your database that you want to find um, articles that have got both of those keywords. Again, there was a quick demonstration of that in the search plan video. Use quotation marks for search for phrases. That's brilliant. It works on Google Scholar as well. So it tells the database or search engine to find a phrase together um, and not two separate words. So that reduces the amount of results as well. Can't find enough, again, the opposite, maybe search a broader, more broader resource, um, something called truncation, which I won't go into today, but you can see, you can use a little asterisk sign at the end, which helps you find the different root endings of a word, which would be incredibly useful. Use the word or between your alternative words. So um, it could be an acronym for something, um, or it could be just a different way of describing it or a broader term or a related term as well. And the use of a question mark um, can find different spellings of a, a keyword. So th this colour in the example with a question mark will find the American spelling and the English spelling as well. There's so much to remember there. We don't expect you to remember it all. So we've provided some really helpful PDFs which are linked on the slide. So you can have these saved on your laptop or wherever you work or have them downloaded so you can refer to them when you're searching as well. 
if you can't find what you need, there are options. So don't panic. We'd hate for you to think I can't find something for my assignment and I really need something. So first of all, do make a reservation if something's out on loan. If you think, what's the point? The 17 people already got a reservation on it. We keep an eye on the res reservations. And if we see there's a lot of reservations on something, we'll try and buy extra copies or get hold of an e-version um, e if it's not there. We can buy books for you um, if we don't have them. So do let us know. Um, we also have something called an interlibrary loan service, which goes throughout the country to find books and also um, journal articles. So if we don't hold them, we'll see if we can get them from a, another library um, and get them sent to us. And often it's done electronically and that can be within the day even. It can be incredibly quick. And there's also something called the Sconal Access Scheme. So this lets students from whatever university go, in some cases for PGRs and PGTs, borrow the materials from another library. Um, but undergrads, you can actually get into the library and look at a text or a journal article within a library. Um, so that's something to bear in mind, particularly with like Northumbria and other universities in the Northeast on our doorstep, or if you're traveling around the UK or going home at some point, something else to be aware of. In COVID at the moment, not all universities are participating, so you just do need to check with the university that you're thinking of visiting. And I'm just going to hand over now quickly to Martin to just round things up for us. So yes. just a little recap. Great, thanks Anne. Yep, so what to take away from the session, the key points to recap, identify your information, information need, what is it that you need? Where can I get it? Create that search plan. So you've got an idea in place. You've got your kind of foundations in place to be able to get going with, 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 with finding the information. Start with reading lists and follow up with bibliographies. And also remember, remember you've got browsing and library, use library search. Extremely important resource, valuable resource, which we should be using every day as part of a kind of uh, academic, academic study and, and, and research planning. Uh, but explore more specialist information resources as well through your subject guide, through the resource guides, and, and, and have a go. Sconal, it's, it's gone on. Scopus can seem a little bit daunting at first, but once you're kind of familiar with library search, um, learning the techniques, just having to play around with it, you will kind of get there, and, and you'll reap the rewards as well from doing that. Um, we've got a whole host of information on the library website, so the academic skills kit, finding information, um, as you'll see the link there on the slides can be extremely important, extremely uh, important for you, for your information. Um, and if, if in doubt, if you're still struggling, you still kind of think, well, what about this? What about that? Book an appointment with your liaison librarian. We are a liaison team. We are happy to talk, to get together one-to-one, -one, either online or in person at the library um, and, and, and have that conversation with you and just point you in the right di direction. Do some live demos if necessary and just, just help you on your way. That's, that's kind of what we're here for and, and, and what we hope, hope, hope to do. We've got a whole host of other Your Skills sessions coming up. Uh, you, you may have uh, been booked onto some previous and got some got some in the future. And we've just got a list of those on the slides. Um, have a look through after the session and, uh, and, 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 and get booked up on, on the library website. We're also putting tweets out um, on a daily basis um, as well, promoting these sessions. So um, follow us at NCL Lib Skills as well on Twitter and, and get that information across to you. And the last thing, yeah, thanks, thanks for joining us. Um, it's, it's, it's been a whistle stop tour. We've kind of rushed through it, but hopefully you've, you've, you've each, each, each one of you have been able to pick, pick, pick an important bit of information out of there. Um, key, key, key websites on there, um, library help available 24 seven um, and the slides up there if you follow the QR code. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah. Thanks again. Has anyone got any questions now? And um, what I'll do is I'll stop recording um, and you're welcome to unmute and you can ask us questions. Um, we've also, me and Martin will be staying around for the next 10 or 15 minutes as well. Um, and you can do some of these activities if you want to have a go at, at searching library search a bit more effectively and also just having a bit of a look around your subject guide and we can hang around and you can have a chat. Um, but equally, there's no pressure to do that. You can log off and do that in your own time as well. Um, so I'll just um, stop um, sharing now and um, come out of this if it will let me. I'm just going to um, stop the